bitch off, they'll never go change You don't know ass nigga, that be the game Same nigga I used to be, fried niggas get used to me Dead man if you fool with me, say that for your eulogy Yo, what is going on y'all, it's your boy Vel and we are back with another Mobile Legends video And before we jump into it, as always, I'ma need you to really really smack that thumbs up button if you enjoy this video because this is going to be the most informative video that I think I've ever done on on this channel so definitely listen up because I'm going to walk you all through everything how I improve so fast I know that a lot of you all see a huge difference in my gameplay when you see me play and yeah like when I'm actually trying and I'm not trolling and messing around I, I know for a fact that I'm a lot better like you know I've always had crazy confidence but ultimately, I've always been my own worst critic, and that's something that people don't know about me, because obviously, when you're in the middle of a game, you're not going to be saying, oh, I did that wrong. Like, you're going to be saying, oh, what is my team doing? Like, you're going to be focused on your team. So, obviously, a lot of the time, you all only hear from my perspective what I think of others. You all never hear the criticisms that I give myself. So, I'm going to walk you through some of these criticisms and what brought about and how I basically got to where... I currently am and some tips that can help you improve and get to a higher level too possibly so starting out it all started obviously when I got into it with another youtuber I was exposed for um, being quote unquote toxic and really that whole situation like it's it started from basically my insecurities to be completely honest with you so when I was told to go like a different lane, like I didn't know what type of strategy these guys was doing. I was playing with some higher level mythics. So the mythic meta is a little bit different than the, the level that I actually play in all the time, especially at that time. The mythic level was just different. I was like, I was an epic player. I, was, I really was an epic player. So I was a good epic player mechanically. I, I was beating people just strictly off of basic game knowledge. So when I went to, um, use alice and they said go top lane i was like can alice even play top lane and honestly at that point in time i didn't know which heroes was the best heroes even for solo lane i knew leah mort i knew hayabusa but i really hadn't do dove too deep into what makes a great solo laner and stuff like that that was stuff that wasn't even on my mind so when it came down to improving i really had like because dude was trash talking like crazy and if you all don't know, I put more effort into YouTube than I ever have at being good in Mobile Legends. So, at the point where I get trash talked, I do have an ego. So, that's when I actually had to start focusing on the game. I took some time. I hit Mythic very fast. Like, soon after that whole incident, I think a few days later, I hit Mythic. Then, the next, the few months after that, I hit Mythics three times in one month on um, three different accounts. And really just, like, really perfecting my skill, perfecting my craft and stuff like that. And basically it all came started from that situation but the, what i actually did in order to make it possible is the most valuable tips in my opinion is you have to understand all the roles at that point in time i was rarely playing anything but marksman i could somewhat play a lot of heroes i could always do decent with any hero but just because you can do decent with a hero don't mean you're doing your job like i could go into a game with a marksman all day long never never feed like, I could just never feed and farm all game. Technically, I won't have a lot of deaths, but my team will have a lot of deaths. But And I used to think that, I, like most people, if you go into a game, you have zero deaths, your team feeds and stuff, you might think that all the time is their fault. No, sometimes it could possibly be yours. Because if you were actually doing your job, your team might not have been in a situation where they end up dying. Now, granted, it's a lot of times that teams take stupid team fights without certain damage dealers and stuff like that so that does happen but if you lose a whole whole lot it's probably you probably need to look at yourself honestly you probably need to look at yourself and that's what i had to do when it when i wanted to really get to the level where i could compete with the top players in the, in my country at least so um when it came down to um actually what i did i had to understand all the roles so I, that's when i started playing with a bunch of different roles and like Listen, it's not going to be the prettiest thing. As you like, if you've seen my account, my stats are very, very low. I've played with like tanks. I've played, I play with a bunch of different heroes, and I would get destroyed. Like, I would get destroyed at certain times. I would end up losing the game because you have to learn how to rotate with different heroes and stuff like that. Like, when I, when I start playing a solo lane, I had to learn the rotations for the solo lane. And 
I was just thinking like not too long ago like I don't remember the last time I had to wonder what I was doing in the middle of a game like where should I rotate should I help this person should I help that person it's just like back then like like when I was like playing then I, I would find myself in situations a lot where I was like yo wh where should I where should I go next okay let me go and try to farm this let me do this now like now I know exactly what I'm supposed to do at all times and it's I'm more so trying to counter what the enemy's doing, trying to understand their strategy. When you're when you're wondering what you're supposed to be doing yourself, that takes away from your ability to analyze the enemies as well as you should be able to analyze them. So you really have to understand how to play your role and be the best at your role, or you're always gonna pretty much be behind, yo. So um, the things that uh, the biggest tips are: understand all the roles, consider if a hero can perform the role, create your own meta. Um, your team selection is going to be huge. You need to learn hero synergies, prioritize the objective, and master survivability. So we are going to go over all of that, and I'm not going to go over them all like one by one because they all just kind of work together fluently. So that's what we're going to talk about. Obviously, we're going to go into um, we're going to go into some of them separate, but for the most part, they all really go hand in hand. So. Um, yeah, we're talking about understanding the roles right now. Basically, understanding the roles, it comes down to just playing the different roles. And yes, your stats are going to go down. Yes, you're, you're going to look trash. And that's one of the things that I've learned. On my other accounts where I have like 90% win rates with heroes and stuff like that, and like I, I can always use the hero that I want to use. If I show my win rate on my main account, somebody else is going to, oh, you got a 58% win rate. Oh, I got a 60. Let me play. And the person is actually not as good as me. But I just, I was, took a while to learn. I took a while to actually learn how to play the hero and stuff like that. And during the learning phase and stuff, my stats just went down on that account. So, so it's harder to do it on your main account sometimes. Sometimes you might just need to um, get another account, get like a Smurf account. It may be easier to progress on a Smurf account. I know when I hop on my Smurf account, it's way easier to progress because all my win rates are so high. Any hero that I want to play, the in, my teammates are just going to give them to me because I, I probably have the highest win rate out of anyone on the team. So when you understand all the heroes and really learn all the roles, it, it makes it so much easier because you know what you're supposed to do you know like for instance i would never go into a lane with an alduis before i knew how to play the different roles before i knew what the solo lane was supposed to do i struggled because sometimes i might have went into a lane with an alduis and i would have just completely destroyed his farm because i just didn't know any better i didn't know that he needed to last hit i didn't know that he needed stacks i didn't know any of that so um learning the learning this type of stuff and understanding the roles that you're supposed to play like as a mid laner learning when and where to rotate when to go for turtle when to go for the objectives and stuff like that it's it's kind of difficult to know when you're supposed to do certain things if you're not used to doing it so that's something that you only learn from playing all the roles because you then get a perspective into the into how the other people feel so when i started playing tank that's when i understood what it felt like to have a team that does nothing that that will not deal damage like if i go engage initiate and i have the whole enemy team under crowd control and my teammates just stand around and look instead of being aggressive and attacking like that's why when i see a tank go in and he's in aggressive i go in right after and i only got that reflex after i had seen after i was playing tank and i wished my teammates would have done that so i as a solo laner like in certain situations when i saw the enemy teams rotate I start rotating from the mid lane to help the solo laner because I learned that as a solo laner, it could be helpful to have somebody come up as in certain situations. Like if four people are ganking, it would be very helpful for somebody to rotate and try to help me, try to save the tower with me. So it's just certain things like that that you only consider when you play certain roles. Like you don't, you will never consider something. You will never consider what someone else is feeling, how to how um someone else plays or something like that if you don't know how to play the role that they're playing that's why it's so crucial that you know how to play every single role in mobile legends don't get it twisted i'm still a marksman player i am a marksman main but it is valuable knowing and understanding how to play every role if i put you if, if i tell you grab this random role you should be able to play at least one hero in that category and you should be able to do that job even if you're not the best at doing that job you should be able to do it like if i tell you play assassin it shouldn't be a problem for you if i tell you go play tank if i tell you play marksman if i tell you play mage if i tell you play um support no matter what i tell you to play you should be able to play it and do your job and 
I, that's that's one of the things that I struggled with. That's one of the reasons that I wasn't as strong as of a player as I could be. So um, <clears throat> that's definitely something that you have to really consider and look into. Also, when it comes down to the meta and and meta heroes, the quote unquote debate on meta heroes and stuff like that, any hero can potentially be meta. Like um, I talked to somebody, they don't believe in meta, and I mean to an extent that makes a lot of sense, but. When it comes down to the meta, in my opinion, you have to consider if a hero can actually play the role that you're trying to do. And that's why it was important to learn roles. Because now, now that you know what job you're supposed to do, you can realistically look at it and be like, can I actually do my job with this hero? So when I was, as you can see in the gameplay in the background, it's Leslie gameplay. When I was playing Leslie, I noticed that, yo, I can actually fight early game. I can be super aggressive. I can... I can basically destroy people. Leslie might be meta, especially for me, the way that I can play Leslie. But for somebody else, somebody else might not be able to play Leslie like me, so that would take Leslie out of the meta for them. And then, like, when it comes to playing Bruno, like, I played Bruno, I'm like, yeah, nah, Bruno takes a little bit too long to get fed. He started being useful at, like, the 10 to 12 minute mark, and by then, my team had already, I mean, the enemy team had already conceded defeat because my teammates was destroying them. So, for 10, 12 minutes, Bruno was, like, just useless. Like, I, was, I wasn't I was playing bad. I was rotating between lanes and everything, but he just didn't have the type of kick and the power that I needed early game to actually be effective. And that type of analyzing, I could only learn by knowing my role. Like, I know what I was supposed to be able to do with Bruno, and I also compared it to what I can do with other heroes. So, I like, in certain situations, like, five minutes in, a team ganked me and killed me. I'm like, yo, if I had Claude, I would have destroyed them. I would have destroyed them right now. Five minutes in, I would have been able to survive. I would have been able to just do a lot of damage. Like, that's the type of stuff that you can only know once you increase your level of knowledge with, like, all around. Um, so you can, you can create your own meta, like once you, but you can, you only can do it once you understand all the roles and that's what Bren Esports does. Like, that's why you see them pick things like Estes, picks like Estes and stuff like that. They know exactly what role they need and they know what heroes they can use to make that work. And that's why these teams, these pro teams can use unorthodox heroes and it still pays off. It pays off for these pro teams that's doing it because they're, they basically, they know what they're doing. They know like. So if your job is to roam around, gank, and kill people, let's say the worst assassin in the game, let's say Xylone. Let's say you can't play Xylone that well, but you know you have one job to do. And you, you, as far as your mechanics go, you're crazy enough to get that job done with Xylone. How can someone tell you that you can't, you can't, you shouldn't use Xylone? I mean, it makes no sense to not use a hero if you know you can do your job with it. Now, the thing is, like, Xylone just does not come with a kit built for, for, been successful in team fights against a bunch of crowd control and because that's the meta that's why he's not a good example because he just will not like those like if you actually are analyzing that unbiasedly he can't perform as great as other heroes in a team fight because the first thing you would want to consider is like chow like chow can actually split push lanes and he can take on a whole enemy team and tank the enemy team if he's a, a tank like like you all you all get what i'm saying man so um also, um, learning synergy, Te like team selection, knowledge, and synergy. So when it comes down to it, you need to know how to choose the right heroes for for the, for the task at hand. Learn the heroes that work together and stuff like that. Because if you can, like, let's say you choose a you choose a late game hero and you got an early game team comp. That's like having a super super early game team comp and then picking Alduis. Alduis can be insane. But if your team comp is not built, like let's say your team comp is is built for for early game fights and high speed attacking and all nonstop aggression, all of this probably won't fit because the game is more than likely going to be decided. Either you all are going to be rushing in early game and dominating, and all of this won't even really be that big of a factor anyway, or you you all are going to be going in rushing, dying, and all of this will be able to do nothing about it until he gets his stacks like 10, 12 minutes into the game. So um. Yeah, like I think synergy and, and team knowledge and stuff like that, it's very, very important as well. Um, and then, I mean, that, that's pretty much it and learning to survive, so mastering survivability, really. Knowing, like, when you play the solo lane, like, I think that, that this is a skill that will help everybody learn to play the solo lane because the solo lane, you're going to be left on your own. You're going to be left on your own. You're going to be 
ganked by three, four people sometimes, you're going to mass start to master being able to survive. Because if you're used to getting attacked by four people and you can survive that, let's say you go back to playing the marksman role where you have help with you and then it's only a few people here and you only get ganked every now and again and then when you get ganked the team automatically comes and helps you that, that situation is way easier than being by yourself against four people so if you can survive as a solo laner you'll be really you'll be a little bit better when it comes to roles that's not so alone so um yeah that's that's pretty much my tips for you all man hopefully you all could follow it hopefully it's not like too too um random i guess like i know um <clears throat> Yeah, I know sometimes like I can talk, I can talk long winded and stuff like that. So yeah, let me know if you want me to break down anything in more detail for you all, because I definitely will do that. If it's anything in particular you want me to focus on, um, and that that you think would help you, and yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much it. I basically told you all how I was able to improve so much and how you can basically do the same thing. It's it's very very. It's very, very easy when you learn how to self-reflect and just look at yourself, be real about what you're capable of, and really just change that, really go hard and stuff. So, um, and everybody can do it. Everybody who wants to improve in this game can, but my biggest tip right now, if you wanna get better at Mobile Legends, one thing that I will say is for the next few days, only play your worst role. Whatever role in Mobile Legends you can't play, you have never tried, you like, learn to play it because once you learn to play it it's going to be something that you notice that you learn that you take from that role and then when you go back to playing the role that you're really good at you're going to consider how that person feels you're going to consider what situation that person is in you're going to rotate and help that person a little bit more or something so i mean you'll 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 start you'll see what i'm talking about once you actually get to the point where you're you're learning different roles, multiple roles, learning how to play, how to rotate, how to farm with multiple roles, even if your role is supposed to farm or not. And also, if you have questions, like stuff like that, like asking, yo, is the solo laner supposed to be farming a lot or, or what is the solo laner supposed to be doing? If you want me to make videos on stuff like that, that's the type of stuff that I want to see in the comment section down below. If you don't, if you have some questions about playing certain roles, you don't even know where to start. So, um, yeah, that's pretty much it, man. Hopefully you all enjoyed this video. As always, be sure to drop that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new, and I'm gonna catch y'all on the next one, fam. Peace out, yo. I'm on it. Can't fail for my family, I want it. So they'll never need hope, I want it. A break, just something that I don't want.